Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we're going to talk about the nearly $1 billion budget deficit that the city of Chicago is facing, while at the same time, they are paying through the nose for all these different various programs for illegal migrants, because this is the cost of a sanctuary city, and by the way, bad progressive government, because not the whole budget deficit is due to the fact that they're spending all this money on the migrants. Now, we're going to get into this, but before we do, I want to thank everybody who supports this channel via actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. Well, we're talking about football and tailgating this fall. Chicago City Council members are facing a difficult challenge, how to fill a nearly $1 billion budget deficit. So joining me now is the City of Chicago Budget Director, Annette Guzman. Annette, thank you so much for your time this morning. You're welcome. Good morning. So this is a big one. The city is $982 billion in the hole, and you have said everything is on the table to eliminate the shortfall so right off the top we hear the number it's not quite a billion dollars but it's close enough to the approximate in terms of a deficit for the city of chicago and now we got a representative from their city council saying everything is on the table in terms of cuts except of course for illegal migrant services because they are the god tier citizens and you should expect your services to go down in quality and in frequency while at the same time expect a tax increase and if you don't believe me if you don't think i'm telling you the truth just wait until she talks about your property taxes in just a second because that's exactly the direction she's going with this uh, and again i want to repeat that everything is on the table to eliminate this shortfall what does that mean for the city you know it means that we're looking not only at you know what new revenues or increased revenues that the city can bring in to support the operations but also you know taking a really hard look at you know our expenditures you know right now though we are recovering and, and really moving past the pandemic, our expenditures are rising at a faster rate than our revenues are. And so we have to take a, a good look at what are the services we're providing, what are the operations that um, we may no longer be able to provide um, without increased revenue. So right there, as you heard, we got the vague politician answer. And I'm going to criticize the Democratic Party for this because this is the city of Chicago and this is the party in power. But make no mistake about it, most politicians, if they can get away with it, would prefer to answer a question this way rather than being directly asked a question however in this particular instance we don't have a dana bash interviewing kamala harris and tim waltz we have a local news reporter who's not afraid of this councilwoman so she's gonna follow up with a much more direct question instead of hearing her ramble about how we need to figure out a way to increase revenues that is called a dramatic tax increase and reduce what we're uh, providing in services those mean services to you and she's gonna cut through the nonsense and ask her directly. Are we talking about property tax increases here? Is that one of the options? You know, uh, no, property tax is one of the um, easiest ways for the city to raise revenue. Um, and, and frankly, for most municipalities to raise revenues, it's, it's one of the largest tools that we have. And so it is something that we're looking at. But I can tell you that, you know, property tax uh, increases are felt differently depending upon where you live in the city. And so we want to be really mindful and careful about which revenues we are seeking to ask, you know, the city uh, residents to uh, contribute uh, to before we pull those levers. So you can tell by this answer that A, she didn't want to be asked directly about property taxes and she's still trying to dance around it but you can see they're definitely leaning in the direction of raising property taxes on average everyday citizens because she said it herself this is one of the easier ways for the city to generate more revenue and by the way this does not only affect homeowners and also a surprising amount of chicago residents are in fact homeowners, but this also affects renters and businesses as well, which means it affects consumers. Because guess what? Property tax increases that hit landlords get passed down in terms of higher rents, and this seems to be rather disgusting and rather tone deaf, considering one day before this segment aired about the budget deficit and about how they're going to raise property taxes on you, the residents of Chicago that are citizens, we saw a story about an illegal immigrant family that got into the asylum system getting taxpayer funded support to buy their first home in the city of chicago it was a homecoming they had only dreamed of until today <laughs> today the gomez family officially welcomed friends to their new home in north austin gabriel gomez tells us it's his dream this is what he wanted for his children it is the first home for this family of four, and it is the first time they have lived in anything bigger than one bedroom for eight years. 
¿Cuál es la reacción? Nosotros estamos muy felices. Eubele Surengel says they are very happy, and this is an important step for their family. Originally from Venezuela, they worked and worked in food service as an auto mechanic, delivering food, factory work. When they first arrived in Chicago in 2022 as new arrivals, they with all of their savings, programs to assist first-time home buyers, and an individual taxpayer identification number, the Gomez family made their dreams come true. I want to say a couple of things. First and foremost, these people are obviously an outlier. They did save money. But the fact of the matter is they had a bunch of different government support, a bunch of different shelters and all that. And if you came here as an asylum seeker, you weren't allowed to work right off the bat. So much of the work that they were saving money from was illegal work that was tax free. And within two years, with all the city support, with all the state support, with all the federal government support, after getting their tax ID number, they were able to take advantage of a bunch of different other government programs and not only were they able to buy a house which again congratulations to them but it was featured on the news in the city of chicago thrown right in the residents faces as their services are going to be cut call me crazy call me a conspiracy theorist but maybe we should cut these first-time homeowner things that end up by the way ginning up demand thus increasing prices for everyone and focus on the services for the citizens rather than think of ways to provide them to illegals i mean again these kind of programs are so unpopular so toxic for illegal immigrants that gavin in california just vetoed a bill that would have given illegals hundred and fifty thousand dollars up to that in down payment and assistance when they wanted to buy homes but these people not only get it and again congratulations to them i'm not saying that they didn't work hard but the fact of the matter is american tax dollars should go to americans and if they made it on their own without all these different government welfare programs in a city that isn't bankrupt for giving away all this money to illegal migrants i would be much happier for them rather than how i feel now which is rather mixed again i understand that this family right here works worked hard. I totally get it. I understand that the United States of America incentivized this. So did the sanctuary city policies and who wouldn't take advantage of that if it was offered to them. But the fact of the matter is citizens that are in poverty, that are homeless, don't get this kind of treatment in the city of Chicago. And they definitely for damn sure when they pulled themselves up without taxpayer assistance, don't get local news segments celebrating them. Yeah. I was just going to say, as a Cook County resident, boy, we got hit really hard uh, with this last assessment. And, and as you said, it is impacting different communities uh, in very different ways and in really terrible ways. <laughs> I'm going to add personally. So for those of you who are unaware, this woman right here, the local news reporter, is referring to Cook County's recent assessments on property values for the purposes of taxation, which in my opinion were lifted up or raised to an inordinate level in order to generate more revenue and be more of a stealth property tax increase which by the way we've actually covered on this channel before dramatic overvaluings of homes because they were deliberately doing so that ended up costing homeowners a crap ton of money who did not have a home at anywhere near the value that it was assessed so already cook county has done a trick to stealth raise the property taxes on all of the residents in this area but they're talking about an additional tax increase and remember they still have that tool of assessing your home to be much higher value at their disposal when they want to do it in a stealth way again um let's talk about city services i know that's something that you're going to look at if city services are cut annette how will that impact residents you know, we are looking uh, to, you know, make sure that we are able to provide the services that we are mandated by law to provide, um, that city residents pay us to uh, provide them. Um, and we're trying to do the most uh, that we can to ensure that we aren't impacting those services that residents need the most. So again, you have to read between the lines in terms of some of these services. So first of all, when she's referring to what they need to provide by law, there's actually two categories that we need to address. Obviously, there is the legal migrants because because these people are defrauding the asylum system and they have all these different sanctuary laws, they are required by law to provide them a certain level of services. However, they could change those laws 
without much issue if there were the political will to do so. The real problem that the city of Chicago has is that according to the Illinois state constitution, they need to provide certain pension services to their city workers, and they have been not putting money into those funds for years and years and probably going back decades. So by law, and you're not going to be able to change that, they have all these different various payments in those categories that they also need to address. So while we have the short-term migrant crisis spending, sanctuary city spending that is hurting the city of Chicago, that is the decades-long mismanagement of the city, the ticking time bomb that is going off as all these different people are retiring and collecting their pensions that again, according to Illinois state law, they are entitled to and the city of Chicago must pay out above anything else so they actually have two different problems right here but you could alleviate the short-term problem by cutting services to migrants and actually you know not being a sanctuary city however the long term is definitely going to be a major issue especially when you realize that brandon johnson has no interest as a guy who's in the pockets of the teachers union a former teachers union member himself in reducing their pensions or even attempting to do so. Um, you know, universally. So, you know, we'll be looking at everything that we currently provide through programming, through outreach, through everything to ensure that, you know, we are impacting residents um, as little as possible. So again, this is one of the main reasons why I hate politicians speak because this woman is going out of her way to say as little as possible to answer the questions. Everything becomes super vague when she presses on a specific issue like property taxes, then she gets a little bit more specific. But other than that, she's like, listen, we're obligated to do some services. We have to protect that. And, uh, you know, we're, we might have to make cuts. So everything's on the table, but it's going to try to impact you as little as possible. I mean, I can't tell you exactly how much or whatever, but, but don't worry about it. It's no big deal, okay? And Annette, how did we get to this point? Almost a billion dollars in a budget deficit that's a lot of money going out not a lot coming in yeah you know while you know we saw a little bit of a reprieve during the pandemic with uh you know a lot of covid aid coming into municipalities states and and, and around the country um you know it's really uh a story about our expenditures. You know, we have uh, obligations that are all hitting at the same time, whether it be, you know, contracts that were recently negotiated for our labor um, or the, you know, new requirements or newer requirements uh, that have been placed on the city as it relates to pension obligations. So I just want to point out that these COVID relief money that went to these state governments was never intended to be forever. So I don't want to hear excuses related to that, that because that money's cut off, you're in a budget deficit. Again, that virus was supposed to be a problem that was a short-term problem in the grand scheme of things not something that you are going to constantly rely on the money for and what these state legislatures or city councils should have done if they had excess money and they were allowed to keep it under law was keep it in a rainy day fund to cover other things if they again were legally allowed to do so rather than complain about how they blew through all the money and now they don't have anything left but again i will point out that she's highlighting pensions and other payments and contracts that are not necessarily related to the migrants. However, the migrant spending is definitely a factor because it's spending that you should not be doing. These people should not be in this country. Again, they are defrauding the asylum system. If you're actually claiming asylum and you're from Venezuela, you should be claiming asylum in the six countries you pass through along the way rather than just coming to America as your first choice. You know, Alderman got into a heated debate here on Fox 32 over the amount of money that the city has spent on the migrant uh, situation, $300 million at least so far. Could that money have been used to fill this budget gap? So I think there's two things to just be really clear with your audience about, you know, the city's uh, portion of that amount is is actually rather small. Um, though we have budgeted for, you know, a certain amount uh, this year, you know, there's a lot of funding that we've received from the county, um, from the state and the federal government to support that work. So while, you know, we um, are really transparent about how much has been spent, that's not all city dollars. So there's a couple of things. First and foremost, while it is true that the city of Chicago is being a little bit scammy in how they build the state and build the county 
for a lot of the issues related to the migrants. The fact of the matter is, what is in the budget for migrant services is in the budget for migrant services. You expecting to partially be reimbursed later doesn't really make a difference if that represents nearly a third of your budget. So yes, it is something to be argued about. Yes, it is something that is a problem. But also take note of the fact that she jumps into all the different vagaries because she doesn't want to talk about this because Brandon Johnson has made it clear, at least publicly, that he doesn't want to stop spending on the migrants. Now, privately, he's sending people to the border to tell them not to come, that Chicago's full, and that he doesn't want to be there. He's also suing bus companies that drop them off in the city of Chicago because he doesn't actually want them. But publicly, he can't say that, and none of his allies can say that, even though, again, you're in a situation where you're throwing out all of these services for these illegal migrants, propping them up, where at least in one case, one was able to buy a house, one family while your residents are going to have their services cut and it's ridiculous and absurd and if when it all hashes out you're only spending a hundred million out of the 300 million that is still a tenth or a ninth of your budget deficit that you could make up and maybe even spend on more productive things i think the second thing to be mindful of is that we've actually saved a ton of money in, in how that operation currently um is operated mm. uh you know one of the things that you know the mayor talks about and then i talked about when i briefed a uh, journalist uh, last week is you know we are forecasting over 200 million dollars in savings within our corporate fund for this year and you know that's actually not very normal for the city to have that much in uh, forecasted savings so um you know from my perspective we are doing our part to already kind of tighten our belts and we're going to do more to assure that you know we are able to meet the resources that are provided to us so yeah to be clear i don't give a damn about her cooking the books in one department while there's a $900 million deficit teetering on a billion dollars. And I also don't care that she's saying, oh, look, we were going to spend an absurd amount of money on the illegal migrants because of our sanctuary city policies, but we cut back to a pretty absurd amount, but not as absurd as we were going to spend. That is not savings. You are still spending. This is like when you go to a store and it's really expensive for everything, but one thing is 20% off, and your girlfriend or your wife buys it, and they act like they save 20%, when in reality, you still spend stuff on an item that you didn't need, and yes, I'm talking to you, my wife, you don't need to buy that thing, and I'm gonna be very sad if you continue to do so. I might actually even cry just a little bit over that, and wow, this just got a little bit too personal. But yeah, that, that's the kind of math that we're talking about. Okay, last question, corporate savings. Break that down for our viewers. I'm confused on what that means, how we're saving money, but yet we still might be asking residents to cough up more in property taxes. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I like this lady reporter. This blonde Chicago reporter, American hero right here, because she's like, corporate savings, what the hell are you talking about? How are you going to say we're saving all this money here, yet we have a 900, almost a billion dollar deficit? And look at the pitiful way that this question gets answered. So the savings that I'm talking about, because you asked me about the migrant mission, that's that's this year's budget, right? So um, one of the things that we've been doing is, you know, reducing our expenditures uh, where we can, where we can, um, to ensure that uh, we aren't, you know, just spending unnecessarily or unreasonably. Um, and so, you know, while we have a budget um, about 5.7 billion dollars in the corporate fund for 2024, our expenditures are going to come in um, a lot lower than that. So yeah, this woman has nothing. It's actually exactly what I said. They were going to spend an absurd amount and now they're spending slightly less and get a load of the fact that they have 5.7 billion dollars in this fund and she's like look we're not gonna blow through all of that fund this year so i think we deserve credit for not incinerating every single account related to the city of chicago no you don't you're an absolute fool. Look, the bottom line here is all these different cities that decided that they were going to put illegals first, migrants first, asylum fraudsters first, are now starting to see the bills come due. And this is really unfortunate for them because all of these reports are starting to break leading up to the 2024 election. And the fact of the matter is that there is one party that has consistently said we need to put migrants first, illegals first, versus the other party that has been campaigning at least on a Americans first, America first. So obviously they don't want to be talking about this right now, but the fact of the matter is fiscal years come up in September and it's looking like an objective disaster in every possible way for all of these blue cities that said that they wanted to live up to their values so hard of putting illegal immigrants first. No, absolutely not. 
we shouldn't be doing this. This is absolutely tragic. And by the way, even though I'm critical of the talking point of you, you voted for this. The fact of the matter is, in the city of Chicago, they tossed Lori Lightfoot and voted in an even woker, even more left-wing mayor, i.e. Brandon Johnson, who has not in any way, shape, or form even signaled against Lori Lightfoot's Enhanced Sanctuary City Ordinance, also known as the Welcome Ordinance. So this guy's worse in every way, and yes, residents of Chicago did vote for this, and that's rather unfortunate because one of our great American cities going down the tube due to the fact that the voters keep putting in these progressive idiots. But you know what? Those are just my thoughts. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Should we give the illegal migrants even more? money because if we help them all buy houses then they could pay the increased property taxes in order to pay for more migrant services or maybe just maybe should we introduce some fiscal discipline into our cities into our blue states across the country again let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you like this video show them by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on the social media support me via support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about the madness in chicago till next time